chicken is ignorantly liking, but then ignorantly I forgot to tell you why the snake is ignorantly disliking. Anybody know? Rejecting Sorry? Rejecting That's the energy. We're forever going, I dislike that, don't like that, don't like your haircut again. You know? Is it downward spiral or just... Yeah. No, it's just like your mind's going, like, don't like that. So the chicken is liking because it pecks. Why would the snake be disliking? It bites. No. Could go. Nope. It hurts us. That's a joke. Um, slithers. Slithers. Nope. It sheds its skin. So it sheds its skin all the time. So it's getting rid of stuff all the time. Thank you. I forgot to tell you. I think the pig, this is not confirmed. I think the pig is ignorant reality because it eats anything. <laughs> it's like, it's like, I don't know what that is, but I'll eat it. I know. I know. But for some reason it became that. So now we're talking about the 12 links of dependent origination. But no, no idea. Well, what do you call it? Doesn't sweat. Yeah, that's what I don't know. It's a good question to find out. Actually, let's let's see if you get this joke. What do you call a deer with no eyes? No idea. Okay. What do you call? Uh, okay. Okay. Happy birthday. Okay, last joke, last joke. What do you call a deer with no legs and no eyes? Still no idea? Okay. <laughs> Don't say like that. Anyway, <laughs> I'll say the next one. Yeah. No more jokes. I've been asked to make an announcement. This is announcement time. Am I supposed to announce what Johnny feels again? Is that, is that my job today? I'm your public announcement person? Johnny can announce <laughs> so a bunch of us have started this beautiful project called the 108 Lives and these kitties are part of the 108 Lives and we've made it our business to go talk to homeless people in Nepal, 108 of them to be precise and then they grew into like hundreds because everyone had a friend or a cousin or a family member or they're living with another 20 people and all of a sudden 108 Lives is like a thousand lives or something but that's okay. The idea was, what if someone could walk up to a person on the street, like a beggar, and said, why are you begging? How would your life be better if you could make it better? What would you wish for? And then try and give them that wish. Go and try and give them that wish, to whatever capacity we can. So over the last year and a bit, a bunch of beautiful people, many of them in this room, have helped make this idea into a reality. One way of producing that idea into a reality was the mothers of these kids give, are given scraps of fabric from the tailor shops around Kathmandu and then they produce these things by hand, all of them, and then we sell them for 140 bucks and one of their kids, oh, that's not a this one kid. doesn't have a kid. When we sell them here for 140 bucks, and winter's coming, <laughs> one of these kids will go to school for a year for that 140 bucks. For us, 140 bucks, bucks is not so much. For them, it's an entire year, one whole year, of putting words and numbers in their heads, an association of what to do with words and numbers, so they have a fighting chance not to be on the street begging like their parents. It's still a hard struggle because the culture over there is, oh, my 12-year-old daughter just got married because I promised her somebody, now I need my nine-year-old kid to get out of school and make me breakfast. So we're still, there's still work to be done, but this gives them a chance. So the, what's the announcement? By quilt. By quilt. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot why I was saying that. There's, <laughs> there's a bunch of quilts here. There's four here. There's four here. And we, we, we make there's, a, a, there's some online. There's some well, online. So. There's a couple here. But, but if you want to either, so someone in the room is getting their first graders. First graders, yeah. To, to tell us what you're doing. Uh -huh. And my school, each class has to have a service project. So I thought it would be nice for my first graders to sponsor uh, children. Yay. And um, they're pretty excited about it. You know, 
So the, the director gonna... had a great idea to have someone come in and videotape my class. So I don't know if there's anyone in here who might be willing to come in and do a very short video of my class. And then you can take it to Nepal and videotape them and get a little correspondence going. And it would be really nice. So Beautiful. Sweet. Thank you. End of announcement time. Unless, Johnny, you're feeling anything that I should tell people about. Leave him alone. Everything's fine. We've got 28 minutes to find out after you have those three states of mind, this cycle grabs you and holds you to death. Literally. So what, and, and it's hard because there's about four ways of interpreting and understanding the dependent origination. Yeah, there's several teachings. So some of them go over one lifetime, some of them go over three lifetimes, some of them talk about the production of the body, some of them talk about just the mind, some of them a combination of the two. So I'm going to give you the essence of what they are, but we'll figure out how they work together next week. So today, by the end of today, you would know way more than a Tibetan person knows about this painting. For them, it's like a good luck charm, for most of them. Oh, good luck, good luck. I put it at the front of my door, yeah? The reason this painting, from time, when, when it began, was put by the door of monasteries, it was like, a, it became a thing, uh, a thing that became a tradition, a tradition that became a thing, is that you put it near the door, you'll see one walking out of the Three Jewels, to remind you that when you walk out there, you're, you're, you're encountering suffering. You're caught by the thing. Don't forget, when you walk out of your house, this dude can get you at any time. You die in between places, between here and going to the toilet, between here and going to work, between waking up and falling asleep, between falling asleep and waking up. We die in between these places we go. So before you walk out the door, you get reminded what's important to me. How does this world really work? It's, the whole idea of having it by the door is to give you a reminder. Because if we don't have that reminder, which is normal, we, we normalize everything. Oh, I'm just gonna go and hang out with my friends at the bar. Happiness, raise blood. <laughs> Headache in the morning. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Was that a late laugh? Yes. To my original <laughs> joke? Okay. Um, there are three ways of understanding dependent origination and if you've done any of our courses so there's these 12 week courses called the Asian Classics Institute courses they, they spend some time on here and I can't spend time on it I can only do that in a six week course but essentially we think there's three ways in, things, in the way things dependently arise the way things appear to us the rock as well as my interpretation of the rock, yeah? You can't stop the rock once it's thrown. But some people are walking around without being thrown rocks at. Something caused that too. Well, there's this picture of the Buddha that's sitting under the tree just be milliseconds before enlightenment and he's sitting there meditating and the demons and the and the, the, the forces against that are throwing spears and things at him and there's the, in the painting you can see outside the halo of the Buddha the spears and rocks being thrown at him and from the Buddha's point of view he's seeing flowers dropping that, that's telling you something there is no rock from its own side there never was but something's forcing a rock in you Something's forcing the Buddha to see flowers being thrown at him. Okay? So there's three ways of understanding dependent origination. Things arise dependent on other things. Everything, without exception. In fact, one of the things that dawned on me not too long ago, again, is that Buddhism, or this knowledge, is not really about Buddha and enlightenment two big fundamental laws karma and emptiness it's actually about that understanding that can produce a state of 
Buddha, awakened, enlightenment. It's more important to understand that than to understand Buddha. It's bizarre. So there's three ways of looking. The, the Buddha actually taught these three ways for super smart people, not so smart people, less smart people. And then there's us, yeah, which we didn't get the teaching, so there's us. But if we, so how did this get produced? There's a, a teaching that says things are caused, yeah? Dependent on their stuff, like this made with, silica, uh, with sand and firing. And, like the stuff that made this is where this comes from, is one way of thinking. Another way of thinking is the way this exists this way is dependent on its parts. And there's reasons for explaining that too many at the moment. In the highest view of how things ex are experienced is that they are perceived, they are dependent. This thing is completely dependent on my forced perception, not choice perception, my forced perception. Something's forcing me to perceive this way. If I understand that force, I can produce this to be something. I can't spend time on it because I've got no time. No, I just had a question. So if the engine in the middle, the three things, is not from this, break that down, then why do you need to break down the cycle? Because there's, uh, there's levels of granularity to causality. So just like this is produced by, what's this produced by? You could say the predominant thing is clay, right? Where, where does China come from? Clay? Huh? Porcelain yeah. is clay, right? So you could say that the predominant, the, the main cause of this is clay. And that's enough to have a conversation. But then you have to say, well, there are also other factors. There's a bit of molding that needs to happen, and then there's a bit of heat that needs to happen. And then you can go, well, how much heat? You can go to the levels of granularity. That's all this is, yeah? But the 12 links are utterly important because there are steps to causality, and if you can break the right step, you can stop the cycle, yeah? So let's talk about death. This link over here, oh, where are we? The low legs is uh, the 12th link, and it's a man carrying a dead body behind him, wrapped up in a shroud. And it's an old man because it's aging, and it's a dead body because it's death. So this link, link number 12, you want to write in your little bits of paper, aging and death. And if you haven't had an experience direct of aging and death, you're in some other planet. We lock our old people away, we hide death. In Tibet, they still take the dead bodies, they leave them in the house next door to the baby for days. They have a much more direct experience of death. The old people in South America live with you until they can kick the bucket. They're annoying. We don't like the annoyance. Ring ding ding, can I have a cup of tea, says grandma. Then grandma with dementia says, you know, oh, who are you? I mean, who are you? It's annoying for the West, so we hide them away. We don't have this deep experience of aging and death. We hide aging. We don't talk to old people. So aging and death is the last link. So we have to, by implication, talk about reincarnation. We'll talk about it next week. Let me just walk you through the links for now so you understand. Them. But right on link number 12, what's aging and death mean to you? Like how aware are you? Is it coming closer because you're getting older? Or because people are getting older or dying clear to you? Or is it far away? Is it something that happens to other people? Who really thinks they, they're really aging and dying? Minute by minute, second by second, eating away. Why do you start with 12? Because that kicks because the whole thing is to stop death, yeah? The whole point, the instructions will tell you how to stop death. And so, the big red monster is Mr. Death. And so, uh, that's the end of a cycle that kicks us into the first cycle, the first part of the next cycle. So the first part of the next cycle is, uh, say Maripa, Maripa. 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 that means ignorance. 
it's similar, if not exactly the same, as the pig. Okay? There is my rigpa instantly when you are coming from an ignorant world into an ignorant world, when you're transitioning from world to world, there is my rigpa in you. There's still ignorance about the way things are perceived and experienced. You don't know what you don't know about ultimate reality, the code in the matrix. You still think it's a chain around your neck, your leg, because that's the only thing you've ever experienced. Things are other people's fault. That's the only thing you know. There is a rock outside my head, not the perception of a rock. Yeah? So the ignorance, the pig, is the first thing that, that we have as a consciousness. Let me just explain it. What I'd like you to do though, this misknowing about how the world operates, there's a flavor to each of you that you know that's true. You know, when you've gone and interacted with somebody in a certain way and then it surprises you that they never understood you, that you were having complete different conversations, it's that kind of thing, but about your entire existence. That's what Maripa is, Maripa, complete ignorance. You think that this is real. We think it's real. What if it's not? When we're just blind people, this is a blind person with a stick walking towards a cliff. Mm -hmm. See, we don't know how we're walking this planet. We don't see it. So that's the first one. Think about that for you. What's the closest awareness you have about that ignorance? And if you can pin that down, write it down, or think about it, it will help you. And it will help you help others. And what's the last do check it out. Do check it out. Do check it out. Do check it out. This is fresh karma. Because we don't know how things work, because we are ignorant of how things really are, we think there are a different way. We call the lawyer. Yeah thinking it's mum. Does that make sense? And we act towards the lawyer as if it's mum. So we make a mistake. And we are making mistakes that have shape. The second link to Chekile is fresh karma. We create new, new courses, ignorantly, right? Because the first one was ignorant. And this is a potter making pots. These pots are holding all the crap we're building. All the ignorant good things and the ignorant bad things. And the ignorant good things are going to turn into temporary good things. Temporary good things. And the ignorant bad things are going to turn into temporary bad things. Forever. Until you break it. That's what this is saying. From ignorance. So upon death, still not figured it out. In we come. Duh. Don't know how this works. So I call the lawyer. <laughs> thinking it's mum. Hey, I just killed someone, mum. Can I tell you that? Lawyer. Oh, okay. You just created a course, a pot to capture that course. Does that make sense? Cool. I'm sure that's not how the Buddha taught it, but apologies. <laughs> Say, uh, actually, huh, there's a shortcut to the entire 12. I'll, I'll, I'll do it quickly, okay? I forgot I put this in here. Maitreya. There's a shortcut to understanding the 12. So remember I told you the levels of granularity? Here's a short one. Death. Upon death, you have this thing called mental seal, seeds or bakchaks. They force you to perceive things ignorantly. Yeah? You see the flow so far? Because things appear to you a certain way that you think are true, you act towards them in the wrong way, creating the courses for the wrong things that's about to come up. Yeah? Liking or disliking them ignorantly, like we said in the center and therefore create these pots, these karmas. And that produces the continuous cycle of all the other courses. So there's something in the first three that we that can stop the continuum cycle. That's that's the driving force to ignorance. So from ignorance comes liking and disliking. Yeah? 
So this is a shortcut by Maitreya, which is a text that we're not covering now. But let me quickly walk you through the rest and we'll talk about them in detail next question. So you get the, there's an energy produced upon birth, yeah, or upon entering the, or leaving death, if you like, that ignorance drives ignorant liking and disliking, it drives causation or karma, because you think you did this and it was incorrect, so you produced an incorrect result. You're going to have something break up, because it wasn't the way, you, you weren't dealing with the right thing. Um, in the next thing we have, so in the previous one, the fresh karma was a potter making pots. It wasn't Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. In this one you have consciousness, which is that thing that's your mind. Let's say this is your mind and it's depicted by a monkey and behind the monkey is a, a house with six windows and it's really your mind, monkey mind, which cannot stop jumping from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing. In fact, it goes through the six windows of your senses. What you're seeing, what you're touching, what you're tasting, what you're seeing, what you're touching, what you're smelling, what you're tasting. The monkey, if you removed, that's why meditation is a thing. If you removed what I'm seeing, monkey only has five windows to get busy. Your mind. You shut two windows down, you're not moving too much, you're not going to have any physical sensations. Monkey gets a little upset. It starts hearing things. Yeah. You go, oh, did you hear that noise? That truck is really annoying. Right? You put <laughs> earplugs on. All of a sudden, monkey starts smelling things. It goes, that's, oh, that's breakfast. No. Then it goes, <laughs> tasting. So this one is consciousness. It describes your mind. Its nature is to be jumping from object to object to object to object. And if you if you are interested to know who you are, who you, the interpreter, is, shut down all the six senses for a bit. Sit down, truly meditate. And your monkey mind will be so pissed off that it will start telling you stories about when you were a child and tomorrow <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. In fact, if you shut down all the things it's interpreting, all the windows it's looking through, you should be left with you, the interpreter. Huh? So it's great. Huh? Yep. Yeah, every every being has consciousness. They're sentient. Good question. Next one. Ten minutes. See if Hector can do it. This is uh, say Minsuk. Minsuk. This is uh, name and form, the vehicle with which your consciousness flows. So it's a man or two men in a boat. Two men in a boat because they go from here, from this shore to that shore, from life to death, from birth to death. They go from this shore to that shore, dropping this body and his mind. These two guys on a boat. It's your body and your mind floating from life to life. That's why it's two men in a boat. Name and form. See if you can write down what these things mean to you because I want to find at the end of next week from you what the closest thing you know is like this. What, what concepts do we have in our current world that say something carries us from life to death? Something causes this body to go from now to death. Something causes my mind to go from here to there. There's something that we each have as a metaphor, as an understanding, whatever upbringing we've had. The next link is uh, Kiche Drum. Say Kiche Drum. And these are the sense powers. Those of you who did the course last time, ACI 4, do you remember the sense powers, what they were? If you didn't, I just talked. Six. Ah, no, 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 they said three <laughs> spheres. Good. Touch, sight. Yeah, it's your senses. Touch and sight. But what part of the senses is it? Let's use the eyeball. In the sutras, it's written that there are cells in the back of your eye that are sensitive to light, but they are not your consciousness. They are like plant. They are like 
uh, physical matter that can sense, alter, light, dark, light, dark, have written this at the time of the Buddha without surgery in the microscope. And that those things are your sense objects, your sense of eye. This is important. The same for your eardrum, that there are cells that can detect movement in sound. That there are things that can detect movement, but they are not consciousness. So they separate before you actually say sweetness, before you say blue. There's something that captured that color different to that color. So that's the sense objects. They develop in you. So they say that from not knowing, ignorance, you call the lawyer, you're producing karmas, liking and disliking in a certain way, that begin to produce your consciousness, your monkey minds, and what do I do with all this? That then flows into this life as body, from life to death as body and mind, that has every being on this thing has these six sense powers, capacity to perceive shift in audio, visual, etc. Does that make sense? They, so it's an empty house with six windows. That's what this is. Cool? Is, it, is it the consciousness or is it the, it's the, not the consciousness? It is not the consciousness. It's, it's a sense existence. conscious. It's a sense uh, power. The power to sense, but it's not the awareness of taste. Awareness, okay. Yeah? So when you combine the mind with those six objects, say, uh, Rekpa. Rekpa? Rekpa. Rekpa. Is that right? Yeah, Rekpa. This is contact, and it's depicted as a man and a woman having naughties under the sheet. <laughs> contact. It's depicted as man and woman in contact. And what this is doing is saying, there's an object out there, that was the sense power, captured that object, and my mind had contact with that thing. Producing, say, Torwa? Feeling. So all of a sudden, your eye caught the thing, your sense power got it, and this is depicted as a person sticking a arrow to his eye, because you'd feel that, right? <laughs> no, no, he's pushing it in. No, yeah. I'm saying, is he trying to stop the contact so he doesn't feel? Uh, no, no, this is just the, the experience of having contact. So he's having eye contact with the speaker. <laughs> yeah. So do you, get, do you get the idea? There are objects out there. Yeah, we don't know what they look like. They've come to the sense power. Yeah. And your monkey is going, I've got a feeling about the rock hitting my head. Yeah. Does that work? And because of this feeling, here's the big trouble. So far, it's okay causality, right? But here's the potential for trouble. Because link eight and nine, based on contact, begin to produce desire. The first thing it will produce is, I don't like that feeling of the rock. I really like that feeling of the ice cream. But it's all based on lies. It's based on thinking that the experience came from and came from the, the connection of object and sense power. In fact, all that thing is lied to you at this point. And your monkey mind doesn't know what to do about it. Plus, you've got the inertia from before of not knowing. So this produces desire, and that is, I think it's a man drinking alcohol. Yep, he's sitting there having a beer. Link 12. Let me make sure I'm not lying to you. Uh, you have a feeling about what you have a. F you have a thought about what you're feeling. How is that? You had a feeling was produced by those things coming together and now you've got your first ignorant thought about that. It produces this kind of desire and after a while that desire becomes grasping, unbearable. You've got to do something about it. 
then that's depicted by a monkey picking fruit yeah it's like I can't wait to get that fruit I'm going for it it's gone from it's gone from just desire sitting there going oh, I might like that fruit to actually doing some activity in your world but don't forget according to this it was caused by not knowing so you're gonna do some shitty activity even if it's goodness it's ignorant which means it's got a life shelf yeah so it's you're just locked in a cycle that starts and stops and starts and stops, which is suffering, raising it. So from desire, you go to grasping, which means you've done some action to satisfy that desire. And that energy is growing. So then what comes up next is extremely important, super important to what gets us to death. And that we cover next week. So, ha! <laughs> so, <laughs> I made it. Look at that. I'm, I'm, at one o'clock. Yeah. I'm trying. This is good. <laughs> so, what I ask you now is whatever went through your mind, whatever went through your heart, whatever aha moment, if you had one, even if you could break a little bit of that chain that you think is the thing around your leg, but it was only ever a string. That you could rip off at any point whatever limitation you have about thinking that life has to be this way if you felt a second of that don't keep it for yourself throw it out wish it upon say well I, I just had something amazing the possibility that I could break free from this cycle how many people can I help if that was true so then you think of people that need this knowledge or some kind of hope that there's some way out and you find them and you imagine that it, it showers over them. Uh, for me, I'm thinking about my godmother who's dying in Argentina and I'm thinking if she could just know when her pains come that they don't have to be there. If something can just give her hope now, I want it to get to her. And like her, I think of every nursing home and every hospital on the planet of people that are not here enjoying lattes, but they're done. And I don't know what they did between birth and then, but they're done, they're finished. I'm hoping that in those moments, those hours, those conversations, whatever they're thinking, some hope comes that there's a way that the chain is not a chain, but in fact, it's just a string. So your goal here is to just dedicate that, shower the planet with everybody that needs it, and may that come true for them. So here we go. Sashin Tokram Viran Shindi Thank you.